I want to call the regular council meeting of the city of Twinsburg to order uh, for Tuesday, August 23rd. Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Here. Mr. Ceresi? Here. Mr. Steele? Here. Mr. Fury? Here. Ms. McFerrin? Here. Mr. Roden? Here. Mrs. Stoffer? Here. Okay, next we'll have the invocation and the pledge les led by Councilman Roden. Please rise. We ask for guidance and direction in all city matters before us tonight. We give thanks to be able to be together. Let us continue to strive to make our community a better place. Help us to work together and may we give our best always. Amen. Amen. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Mr. Scafidi, council is very excited to uh, get going here, but uh, usually we take a break. So if anyone would like to speak at the regular council meeting, you can come and sign up now yeah. while we're right up here. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Just come on up and speak. <laughs> Give you a minute to do that. In the meantime, as the mayor said, I would like to say good evening to everybody and welcome council and the mayor and the, law, and the finance director and the law director and everybody back after our summer break. I guess I lost my head tonight and uh, skipped a few <laughs> steps uh, asking everybody to come up and sign in. So um, thank you for coming up, both of you. Appreciate that and look forward to hearing what your comments are going to be. And it's just glad to be back and get back to work uh, and, and uh, see how we go from here. Okay, next we will have the approval of the minutes from the July 12, 2016 meeting. Any changes or questions or comments? Hearing none, those minutes will stand as written. Next, we have audience participation. Shannon. First, we have Bob Hughes. Good evening. Uh, I'm Bob Thews, 2229 Demi Drive, uh, Twinsburg, and that's in the Meadowood uh, subdivision. I attended the uh, special meeting of the third vote, the third vote of Resolution 75 2016. Now, uh, I call it the third vote because at the previous regular meeting, there were two votes on Resolution 70, 2016, and both times it was defeated. Uh, resolution 70, 2016 was identical to 75, 2016. Uh, so it took three votes and a special meeting to supposedly pass this resolution. I contend that the positive results of this special meeting were illegal and in violation of the city charter and state laws. Section 310 of the city charter states no bylaw, ordinance, or resolution of general or permanent nature or granting a franchise or creating a right, and this is important, or involving an expenditure of money or levying a tax or a purchase, lease, or sale, a transfer of property shall be passed unless it is fully and distinctly read on three different days. There shall be no authority to dispense with this except by five members of council. First question is, does this resolution meet the above requirements? 
Well, from the appearance, it, it doesn't. Until you read the seven pages behind the resolution. Three of those seven pages involve finance with one line item stating local resources of $620,000, $620,390. This shows a commitment from the council to provide $620,000 in funds from Twinsburg coffers. Now reread the or involving expenditures of money and levying of a tax. I'm sure all members of council have a copy of these pages. This would be an easy remedy if you had five votes in support of this special meeting, but you did not. You only had four votes in support. In fact, with some amazing political sleight of hand, this emergency meeting started out with resolution as declaring an emergency, but was voted for to as an emergency onto a regular resolution. So this puts it under the direction of the previous section of 310 of the Charter. Five votes were needed. Anyway, what was done at the meeting was wrong, very wrong. No mayor or legal representative was available for this meeting, so the brunt of the, this falls on council president who, as an experienced politician and long-term member of council, should know the rules and I'm sure he does. It's a real shame that council president did not get his way and have his fifth vote flown back from the Carolinas for the special meeting. Of course, that may beg the question as to whether this is a proper use of Twinsburg funds. But then again, you are a product of your environment. Right, Mr. President? As a concerned citizen representing many of the people of, in Twinsburg, I've been asked to make council accountable for their actions. It's a shame that the certain members of council refuse to hear the voices of the public. So in turn, I have sent a complaint about this meeting by certified mail to the state of Ohio. Anyone who would like to read a copy of that complaint that I have sent to the state of Ohio Public Works Commission and the state of Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine can get with me after the meeting. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Uh, I am going to make one comment on that, that uh, yes, I am the council president and the law director and the mayor were not present at that meeting. However, there was a lot of consul consulting going on prior to that. So it just wasn't a sole decision based on anybody up here on this board, but it was, also, it was advised by our legal department. And if Mr. Maestros would like to speak at this time, I welcome that. If not, that's fine as well. Well, the only reason I'd hesitate is Mr. Hughes indicated there was a complaint filed. I haven't seen the complaint. I'd rather answer okay. that complaint I understand. whatever allegations are brought up in that. But okay. That's a good move. Thank you. Next, Shannon. Chris. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, I understand you filed a complaint, but I, I don't think there was anything done in you know, out of line with the charter. That, that, that resolution, and it was, it's a resolution. Resolutions uh, historically in the city are, are one reading, and they go into effect in 10 days where an ordinance has three separate readings and takes an action. What that, that resolution was, was an application for a grant. So I don't believe that any monies were allocated. In the future, we would always have the opportunity to either accept or decline the grant. And if we accepted the grant, there would be conditions of what we would have to do to uh, to balance that out. But uh, uh, you know, resolution that's that, and we took the emergency clause out of that uh, and it was passed on, on a. Uh, I, I don't recall the actual vote. But I think it was six zero, but I don't recall. I, or no. uh, four two. Thank you. Uh, so it would just pass, and it, and it couldn't. It has ten days to, to wait for signature or not. So that's. Again, that, that's in line with, the, you know, historically, with, with uh, I've been here 13, almost 14 years. That's been the, the, the policy and the practice of, of, of the council in, 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 in conjunction with, I believe, with the, the charter. As far as for the meeting, 
either the mayor or three council people can call a special meeting, and that's also laid out in the, in the charter. So I don't believe the meeting was illegal. And I'm simply just giving you my opinion. That's all. No. No. That's it. You done? Okay. Anybody else? Shannon, who's next? Next we have Chris Hedrick. Give us your name and address before you speak. Yeah, Chris Hedrick. I live at 10282 Sandalwood Lane uh, in um, Meadowood. And I'm just here to voice my support for the proposed, or I guess decided upon roundabout at this point. Uh, I know you guys probably get a lot of folks here coming to um, not support the roundabout at this point uh, since it's already been passed. But I just want to let you know I think it was the right decision. I have a family. I go in and out of that uh, intersection every day, uh, as do the other residents. Um, and I'm a believer in the statistics and, 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 and whatnot with roundabouts. And so um, I thought you guys just might appreciate somebody coming from the development to say, uh, keep it up. I hope, I hope it gets done on time next year. And um, I will certainly be excited to use it. One of the things that I don't think a lot of people talk about are the, is the um, pedestrian safety, I think. you know the the efficiency and the, it's safer for vehicles and stuff like that. But um, I was surprised when I started doing my research to find out that it's actually safer for pedestrians to cross as well because you only have cars exiting the intersection from one direction versus three directions. Uh, and the crosswalks are placed at least a car length outside the roundabout so that if a vehicle does have to stop to yield to a pedestrian crossing, they stop outside of the roundabout, unlike a traditional intersection where you stop in the intersection. Um, and you're also not necessarily looking when you're making a left-hand turn, and so you don't see the pedestrian until you're, you've already made your turn. So um, I did do a, uh, I saw some chatter on our neighborhood Facebook page, and some, some folks were concerned about um, the predominant north-south traffic uh, inhibiting residents' ability to get in and out of the development. So um, knowing that the, the, the that has very little effect on, on roundabouts because the person to, to the left always has the right of way regardless of the predominant flow on traffic. So I did a little study, um, which was anytime I was going in or out of the development um, for a couple weeks, I just took a look to my left and I said, is there somebody to my left? Um, and if no, I counted that as a win for the roundabout because that means I have the right of way. If there was someone to my left, I looked across the intersection to see if there was somebody across from me because if there was somebody across from me and to my left that means I also have the right of way because the person across from me is going to go and that is my option to go as well. Um, I got up to 50 trips through the intersection and 38 times I had the right of way um, and that was in and out of the development that was on all four sides of that intersection and so um, it, it, it's not a concern um, for me and I hope that that uh, as people get used to the roundabout down by uh, by Heinz, I hope people who aren't familiar with them will see how great they are, and uh, hopefully they'll come around on it. So, thank you, guys. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Shannon, next. Yeah. Next, we have uh, Jared Leninger. Leninger. Good evening. Uh, Jared Leininger, 12138 Waywood Drive in Meadowood as well. Um, like Chris, I'm here. I've, I've seen a lot of um, negative attention towards this second roundabout, talking about the same subject matter. Um, what sparked me to come, there was a Facebook poll that I participated in, and I think it was actually quoted here. It was 60% against the, right, the roundabout. And I think you'll understand it's not a full representation of the population, but regardless, I thought it'd be important to understand why people are against it. And so I asked around, I asked as many people as I could that uh, were not in favor, and I heard a lot of opinions, and I didn't hear any facts. Um, right or wrong, I'm a big believer in facts. Um, and so I thought I would come and not give my opinion, but give some facts I learned through my own research. The biggest, and I think you know it, but I'll I'll cite it anyways, is um, according to the U.S. Department of Transportation and Federal Highway Administration, uh, roundabouts offer a 90% reduction in fatalities, 76% 76 reduction in injuries, and 35% reduction in all crashes. Um, and I know people have heard this, and they still argue that they're not safe. 
Um, and this comes from not only the U.S. Department of Transportation, but Transportation Research Board, National Academy of Sciences, the National Cooperative Highway Research Program, and the list goes on. And what I think is baffling is um, these are groups of professionals that do this for a living, and their job is to make our roads safer, and they are recommending we use more roundabouts. And I work in a warehouse, and I don't think I know better than them, and um, I don't think many of us do. So I personally believe that it is an unarguable fact that they are safer. Um, so then I move on to, and for me, that trumps. I have a family. The safety trumps for me, so I stop there. But I move on because there are other concerns. Um, pedestrian safety was the one I heard that I actually was most intrigued by. I thought that was a good point, so I looked into that. Um, and the statistics, statistics also show it's safer for pedestrians, but I wanted to see why. So I looked into a couple case studies, and I'll quickly cite them. Uh, on Fort, Pier Fort Pierce, Florida, they installed a roundabout um, right along the waterfront historic shop area and they had a problem with foot traffic when it was a lighted intersection. Since then, their pedestrian traffic across the intersection has gone from 50 pedestrians today to about 1,000. It has increased business um, revenue at that area and has helped. And the quote from the study is, slower vehicle speeds complemented by the curb extensions and refuge islands makes crossing the street safer for pedestrians and allows them to enjoy the downtown environment. Another one I thought was even more compelling um, because we're in a residential area was in Green Bay, Wisconsin, they put one right next to a big school complex, middle school, elementary, high school. And the quote from that case study is, the Sheriff's Department was so pleased that it removed the highway's hazardous designation in 2000, which enabled students to walk and bike to school instead of being forced to be bused or driven by their parents. Um, so again, I hear, can you imagine a traffic circle with flashing lights and pedestrians crossing it? And the good news is we don't have to imagine it. It's been done. It's safer. Um, uh, practicality has been brought up. The problem with the Lisa Light Lane, and we've heard it. Um, I don't think we should install a more dangerous, less efficient intersection just because the person next to us has a worse one. That'll just in turn make them not fix theirs. Um, and I, this one is my favorite. I've heard one is okay, but two is too much. And I uh, also I asked that person if they took half the seatbelts out of their car. Um, I guess the point I want to make is, if you are making an argument or voting against this roundabout, I would ask you to consider what you are saying. And what you are saying is, I want the residents to use an intersection they are nine times more likely to die in because. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Anybody else? That's it. Okay. Next, we will move on to the Council Communication and Committee Reports. Mrs. Stoffer. Oh, okay. The uh, BZA met on August 10th, um, and they um, did have uh, one item on the agenda, which they had the item, and then afterward, or they had a work session, and then they, um, uh, and after that, they voted on it, so they had public participation. So uh, what it was was um, a... 10-foot setback uh, and a variance, and a three-foot three setback variance, and they were requesting to allow for a parking lot <coughs> expansion, and <coughs> it was approved. So um, need, I'll need to make a motion. Do I I'll make that during the meeting? No? Or no? no? Okay, I'd like to make a motion uh, to waive the 30-day waiting period for case number 10, 2016. Okay. Any discussion? Call the roll. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mr. Cerisi? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Okay, and that's all I have. Okay. Uh, Mr. Steele? Okay, the uh, Architectural Review Board met twice on August the 14th and August the 18th. Uh, on the uh, August 4th meeting, one of the things that we're going to be seeing is the first merit building, the sandstone building at 91 and Ravenna Road. They're going to be taking down the signs off of that building in first merit because it's Huntington. Now. Huntington is not going to be using that building. They are going to keep, and they apply, got signs approved for the drive through because the drive through they will keep and continue to operate. Okay? Uh, on the uh, on the two different meetings, the ARB approved let me see 17 new homes in our city um, and a couple of signs. And on August 
the 18th, they also approved the plan to replace the restrooms in the park for the Twins Bird Camp. And that's it. That's my role. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. George Killian, Dr. Mr. Roden. Uh, well, we just had a safety meeting this Gary, evening. I don't know if we're going to talk about it. No, I'll let you do it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, we did discuss uh, continuing our sidewalks, uh, more discussion with that, some uh, crosswalk lights. Um, so I think it's moving in the right direction. And I don't know if there's anything else to say, but uh, that's all of my committee meetings that I've met. And I guess I can't win the trip. Oh, and we're, <laughs> we're also getting well, crosswalk signs. We're getting speed signs. So the ones that are uh, digital that you see are, you know, you can see them and they take it off faster going. We have two of those that are coming and uh, two additional ones that will be coming with, yeah. next year. So it is. With two, yeah, there's, we have two in, in house already. We're just getting them mounted and going to be putting them up. And then, yeah, we'll be ordering two more next year. So we have four that we can rotate around the city. Gary, thanks so much. I'm with and that is it for Monday. Okay. Mr. Fury. You got a big month. It's St. Patrick's Day and you're Thank giving you away one. You're welcome. Really <laughs> the planning commission met on August 1st. Uh, there was a lot split for a uh, cemetery subdivision. <laughs> Uh, it was a four-way split, so that uh, uh, and it was approved 5-0. Uh, there was a site plan, uh, preliminary site plan approval for the uh, Wilcox uh, Hospitality. It's a, a Marriott resident inn. It would be a five-story, 89-room uh, hotel opposed over by the Damons is that now. Um, and that uh, preliminary site plan was also passed 5-0. The next meeting of the planning commission will be 7 12 at uh, 7 p.m. in uh, Council Chambers. That's all I have right now. Okay, thank you. Mr. Tracy. <laughs> thank you. Um, I, haven't had, <coughs> I haven't had any uh, meetings since our, since our last. I haven't had any meetings since our last uh, meeting when uh, we met in July but um, we did uh, have another successful Twins Days and um, I think we had over 1900 sets of twins registered and it was two beautiful days we had great weather and um, some pretty good attendance um, still don't have the figures yet they're still totaling up all that stuff um, at the Twins Day Festival office but um, we did have uh, tremendous cooperation from the school district and especially from the city of Twinsburg and on behalf of the Twins Day Festival Committee uh, I was asked to present this plaque to the mayor uh, with their appreciation for the, the, um, the work that the city does on their behalf so mayor And the reason I was moving my microphone around is I was I received a phone call from a resident who said they can never hear me when I talk, so I must not be speaking into the microphone. And it's not the first time I heard that, so I wanted to make sure that my voice was heard. Thank you. That's all I have. <laughs> okay, Miss McFerrin. Parks and Recreation Committee meeting is this Thursday at 6.30 30 here. Um, there is a legal notice that's been posted about an available appointment for the Parks and Recreation Committee. We are looking for one team representative, and um, the applications have to be in by Friday, October 21st at 4.30. Um, oh, exciting. The Chamber had their board meeting on the 10th. Um, next Wednesday, there's a three-chamber lunch with David Joyce. And an exciting project that the Chamber worked on and Mark Matowski um, was the Explore Twinsburg um, book. And it's available for $30. It was completed in time for Twins Day. We haven't had a chance to look at it. It's very nicely done. And it's available at City Hall and also at the Chamber building. Uh, Graphic Advisory Committee meeting 
We met August 11th, and um, basically the golf course is in good shape. We talked a lot about the clubhouse, and I know the mayor is going to be talking about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, and finally, uh, over the summer, my committees did not meet. However, we're back in session now, and Public Works Committee will be meeting on September 13th at 6 o'clock here at City Hall. Uh, at that time, I know uh, one of the topics is we're going to discuss the next year's road uh, program. And then the next council meeting will be on September 13th as well at 7 o'clock. The caucus meeting will be right here in the uh, council chambers. Other than that, um, oh, the Capital Improvements Board will begin to meet soon. I think we start in September, October. I don't have my calendar in front of me. The last Thursday in uh, September 20. Last Thursday in September. Well, we'll have a chance to. Oh, you do? Okay. Then we'll announce it again. And uh, other than that, that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, well, welcome back, Council. It's good to be back uh, um, at work again. Um, I just want to make a quick comment, um, the two gentlemen that, that spoke. Um, I did receive emails from them. Um, soon after our last council meeting, I chose not to send those out to council. I, quite frankly, was tired of emailing and talking about roundabouts, so I kind of sat on those. Um, but they did come in here tonight and uh, share some um, some of their thoughts, I guess, with us. So, and, and I did receive an additional email from a property owner in the center of town that brought up a topic that uh, I hadn't really thought about was the environmental impact um, that uh, in roundabouts. We don't have cars sitting and idling and polluting our air that, um, you know, there's, there is an environmental component to them that I thought was interesting that I'd never heard anyone talk about before. But anyway, I just wanted to, to mention that um, before I got started. Um, lots has happened over uh, the last uh, four to five weeks. Um, I did attend the McTarian Golf Outing, which again is, is, a, is a great event. It sells out every single year. Our police department does a wonderful job organizing that. There's tremendous support um, and, and the money goes to, to, to great use for, for the McTarian family. Um, around town there was uh, several uh, ribbon cuttings, events that went on with some businesses. Um, FedEx has official ribbon cutting which I believe a number of council attended. It was a, was a, a great event. Uh, it's a fascinating building. I mean, they can process about 15,000 packages an hour there uh, with the conveyor system um, that they've got established. But um, so far, uh, everything seems to be going well with, with FedEx. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of concerns about the business and the traffic, but I haven't heard anything from residents or any complaints. And, things seem to be moving smoothly. Um, Amazon is quickly being built behind FedEx, if you haven't noticed. Um, they're hoped to be operational by uh, November. Another event that I attended was the ribbon cutting for Maplewood, which is an Alzheimer's, early Alzheimer's care facility that's, that's opened up here in Twinsburg. And it was uh, a spectacular event. I mean, the food there that they serve at the facility um, was, uh, was um, amazing. Um, so it really is a nice facility. I encourage anyone who has if you're looking um, for a family member or friend that needs that kind of care to, to look at Maplewood. Uh, and the last was Turl's Gym. Uh, they had a 25th anniversary celebration, which I attended. And uh, it, was a, it was a fun event, a lot of uh, uh, demonstrations from some of the young gymnasts that, uh, that were there. Um, things going on around town. We've been working hard on renovations at the fitness center. So if you've been in and out of there, we've replaced the uh, interior floor, the, the courts. They're still working on it. We hope to be done in the next week or so. Um, so I appreciate the patience of, of the members and the residents that play basketball there and other um, other types of practices, but that'll be done soon. Um, we talked about the pool pump earlier. Um, we've had some issues, but we hope to have the indoor pool back open on time. Um, Rock the Park had several concerts, um, all well attended. Um, I've been fortunate this year to be able to attend all the all the concerts and really interact with the people that uh, have attended. And a lot of them come from out of town, and, and really, when you talk to them, talk about what a gym that is to have that amphitheater and the ability to do those concerts and the way those concerts are organized. Um, and so, you know, we have internally here looked at um, kind of a big picture master plan for what may we can do with that amphitheater in the future to um, we keep patching that 
uh, that tarp that goes over the amphitheater every year to the tune of, I think, ten or $20,000. Um, so there's a lot of things that we could adjust to really make that, you know, take it to a whole different level than what it currently is. But uh, um, so we are looking at different things with, with our amphitheater. Um, as Mr. Tracy said, Twins Day was another successful weekend here in town. Um, I had fortunate enough to be able to judge uh, Twins for about six hours on Saturday. Um, it was a long day, <laughs> but it was it was fun. I had a, had a good time with all the Twins that showed up. Um, it's very difficult to judge 20 sets of you know nine-year-old you know identical Twins and try to pick out you know who's the most alike. Um, it's a very difficult thing to do, but it was it was a lot of fun and we had great weather um, and. Uh, I know the, the committee was, uh, was happy by the, the turnout. Um, also, we had uh, a big event here in the city, and I think we're going to play a, a short video that has been created. Um, National Night Out was a police community event, and I think a lot of the residents really didn't know what that meant. Um, we've not done it here in the city. Other communities do it all around the state um, and the country, actually, and this was I got me right up there. Um, so this was an event that uh, we weren't sure how many people were going to show up, but we ended up having about six or 700 residents show up. It was a well-organized event. The police force did a great job. We had the bomb squad, the SWAT team. We had Rangers there. We had the Army Reserve bring vehicles. Um, we had uh, events for kids. The city now owns these different carts you'll see pictures of, and we have different goggles you can put on that will simulate different levels of intoxication and people were testing their abilities with with these uh, with goggles on but it was a fun event and hopefully next year I think it's going to double but this was put together and I just really wanted to share it with you and more importantly share it with those who are watching to so show them what a good event it is so next year we hopefully kind of double our attendance so this all started as part of the council Killian, Dr. program. Gary, we'll send it back to you. Started to have some chatter between Gary, thanks so much. And fire. So this is kind of a creative course that combines both the physical agility requirements for both the police and the firemen. 25 push-ups, 25 sit-ups. From that point, the next person goes to a, a 175-pound dummy drag. So they'll drag that 10 yards. Then they'll go out, pick up a 40-pound fire hose. They're going to run two sets of bleachers. Come back, drop the hose, drag the dummy back. They're going to tag their teammate, <coughs> who will then start, and then that person will run a complete lap. The contest is not over until the last person finishes the lap. So hopefully we'll have fun, no one gets hurt, and we'll see who wins. This. We had we served probably six, seven hundred hot dogs and chips and drinks for everybody that showed up. And, um, there was a lot of activities going on.
believe three different uh, canine units there in different communities. This is where Yasso kind of scares the cameraman who's on his knees. He just starts running straight toward him and <laughs> <laughs> he gets up and backs up quickly. I just wanted to share that, uh, and so hopefully next year we'll get, you know, much bigger turnout and have as much fun as we did this year. Um, the last thing in my report I just wanted to mention was um, we lost uh, two two uh, important people to Twinsburg, uh, Russ Pry and Steve Lafayette, um since our last meeting. Um, both are individuals, um, different side of the uh, political fence, so to speak, but both um, were very bipartisan um, politicians that did a lot to make things happen both um, the federal level, county level, and, and the local level. I think what they did and what they tried to do really touched us here in Twinsburg. Um, I was able to attend uh, Russ's uh, memorial service in Akron and, um, and it was uh, a very fitting tribute to him and what he's accomplished in his life. So. I just want to close on that, and uh, we'll go into some department head reports. <laughs> okay. All right. We have just Karen. Is Karen the only one reporting today? Can we go ahead? Yes, sir. Wow. Welcome back, Council. Um, I'll just update you as far as what happened over the summer. Um, the 2017 budget has been prepared. We've had our um, the mayor's budget hearings all throughout the summer, and so as a result, I'll be sending to council as well as capital improvement board on one or before Friday, September 18th, the documents as it relates to those budgets that have been presented to the mayor. Um, the first capital improvement board meeting is to be held on Thursday, September 29th, and that's at 7:30. As well as the finance, the first finance committee budget hearing is scheduled for Tuesday, October 11th at 5:30. So I think that's before uh, council meeting. Currently, I'm working on the 2015 disclo uh, continued disclosure statement that um, is reviewed by um, publicly reviewed by investors, etc. Um, that is also prepared in conjunction with Squires, um, and we'll have that done on or before. 
the end of September 30th. That's the, the deadline to submit that. And the city's 2015 financial audit draft is complete and will be forwarded to the state auditor for review and approval after the federal grant schedule reconciliation is confirmed from ODOT. So once that is done, I will give you an update on that, or if there's any changes due to that um, reconciliation of the ODOT records, uh, I will update you on that as well. As far as the income tax collected for August, uh, the city received 1,498,360 compared to last year's receipts of 1,732,120. This reflects a decrease of 13.45% or 232,760 less compared to last year. Refunds and adjustments in the amount of 51,181 are also reflective in the August collection. Total year-to-date collected thus far is 14,713,568 compared to last year, 13,757,500. This also re this reflects an increase of 7% or 956,067 more compared to last year. The net cash distribution for the individual net and withholding profit is 179,071. And that's all I have to report. George Killian.com. Gary, thanks so much. I'm with Killian Lett of Killian's. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back. Kind of drawn toward the end of our summer here. So um, we're winding down on our seasonal staff, uh, at least in the Parks and Rec departments. Uh, some of the um, seasonal staff will be coming indoors. Some of the lifeguards will come indoors to the pool. and. Uh, a few of the camp leaders come in as um, fitness attendants. Uh, the golf course people will be around for a while longer. Um, our wellness program uh, is gaining momentum. We're planning uh, to get into the next phase of that. We're going to have some lunch and learn talks on the topic of uh, nutrition and diet, uh, which will be available to all the employees. Uh, flu shots are going to be coming up, and then um, recently posted a, um, a part-time dispatch position. So we still we have that out there. It's been tough to get um, part-time dispatchers. So hopefully, um, if anybody's watching or listening and knows anybody interested, um, they can send them to our website for uh, application for the dispatch position. Uh, in our IT department, we are very, very happy to announce that we finally getting to the end of all our PCs are up on uh, Windows 7. We don't have any more XP machines. Uh, well, maybe one or two. Um, and then yesterday uh, was the um, deadline for the R RFP for the new phone system. Um, uh, it was available for two months. Uh, Mark had a lot of great feedback. Mark prepared that um, uh, that RFP, which um, was he got a lot of compliments on the fact that it was very detailed, very complete, easy to understand. Um, we had uh, 10 people put that together. I mean, uh, 10 people put together a proposal. Uh, so we'll be going through those and um, kind of trying to assess who the best bid. Obviously, looking at the cost, but there's also other factors such as um, yearly maintenance fees, um, support options, and how well the uh, proposed system will integrate with our current network. Um, so, like I said, we did get we did get 10 bids, and we'll be putting all that together. Um, in our civil service department, they did not meet in August, and uh, the next civil service meeting is September 8th. Has yes. Jim gotten any applications or turned back in for part-time golf course? Uh, I think so. I think there's been a couple. Yeah, we, we've hired a few seasonals, too. Yeah. I know the other day we were up there, he was saying that he's really short because yeah they, they all go back to school I know yeah. so yeah but I, I think we have gotten a couple in and there yeah, a couple new guys I've signed off on a couple new, yeah. new hires there are actually season, a couple so. coming on board here real soon great thanks thank you <coughs> is that it? that's all we have okay next we will move on to legislation first we have ordinance 73 2016 in ordinance amending chapter, chapter 1195 of the codified ordinances of the city of Twinsburg regarding site development regulations. This ordinance stands on its, uh, it's on second reading. This, tonight's its third reading. We will be looking for adoption. Um, it's been discussed at the last couple council meetings uh, that we've read it. And what this is, it's, an, it's uh, an ordinance accepting the amendments to the uh, zoning and development regulations, Title IX, Chapter 1195. Um, as recommended by the Planning Commission at their June 20th meeting. Anybody have any? Uh, well, right now I'd like to make a motion that we adopt uh, Ordinance 73 2016. Is there a second? I'll second. 
Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Shannon, would you call the roll? Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Cerisi? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Ms. McCarran? Yes. Okay. Ordinance uh, 73 2016 passes 7 0. Next, we have Ordinance 81 2016. In ordinance amending the current year appropriations for the various general and special revenue accounts as established in Ordinance 6, 2016, the appropriation ordinance of the City of Twinsburg for the year 2016. Okay, and that's on its uh, first reading. Next, we have Ordinance 82, 2016. In ordinance amending the current year appropriations for the various special revenue accounts as established in Ordinance 6, 2016, the appropriation ordinance for the City of Twinsburg for the year 2016, and declaring an emergency. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, place Ordinance 82-2016 on its third and final reading declared an emergency. Is there a second? No second. Mr. Fury seconds. Any discussion on the emergency? Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Cerisi? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Okay, I need someone to uh, make a motion to adopt uh, Ordinance 82-2016. So moved. Mr. Steele. Okay. Mr. Steele, uh, second. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Seracy, second. Any discussion on the adoption? You said 75000 for a road program. The reason for the emergency is we want to have the money put in at this time so it's available for the projects to be ongoing. Okay. Anything else? Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Steele? Yes. Mr. Seracy? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Uh, Ordinance 82 2016 uh, passes as an emergency 7 0. We have Resolution 83 2016. A resolution declaring the official intent and reasonable expectation of the City of Twinsburg on behalf of the State of Ohio for the Crestwood Waterline Replacement Project with the proceeds of tax exempt debt of the State of Ohio. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt Resolution 83-2016. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Roden seconds. Uh, discussion? No discussion? This Shannon, is a, oh, this go is ahead. This Ohio Public Works grant to reimburse us for the uh, Crestwood Water Line. Correct. Right. Shannon, Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mr. Cerisi? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Okay, Resolution 83-2016 passes 7-0. Uh, next, we have Ordinance 84-2016. In Ordinance amending the current year appropriations for the various special revenue accounts as established in Ordinance 6, 2016, the Appropriation Ordinance of the City of Twinsburg for the year 2016 and declaring an emergency. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we place Ordinance 84-2016 on its third and final reading and declare it an emergency. Is there a second? A second. Mr. Fury seconds. Any discussion on the emergency? The reason for the emergency is we have to pay for two pumps. Correct. Uh, Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Cerisi? Yes. Okay. Uh, now I need a motion to adopt 84 2016 as an emergency. So moved. Mr. Roden? No second. second. Who seconded? I'm sorry. Mr. Fury, any discussion? <laughs> Call the roll. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mr. Ceresi? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Okay, Ordinance 84 2016 passes 7 0 as an emergency. And that uh, ends our legislation portion of tonight's meeting. Next, we move on to unfinished business, new business, and miscellaneous. So, uh, Mr. Fury, we'll start with you. I have nothing this evening. Okay, Mr. Seracy. Um I, I just wanted to um, reiterate, we, you, uh, you and I, Mr. Scafidi, had a conversation last fall um, regarding capital improvements meetings, and I wanted to encourage all council members to come if you can, because I sat through the capital improvements meetings where, all, where the department heads came and made presentations, then we took it to finance, and some department heads were called back because some council members missed their explanation. And then even the night we voted, we had uh, department heads again. So 
in order to not complicate the issue, just just a request. I know there's, I think, just yourself in, on that committee. Correct. But, but I think if we're all there, it certainly will go a lot smoother. And um, there really is no reason for the department heads to have to explain everything three different times, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I, I just wanted to remind you of that because we, we had agreed on that last fall. And uh, that's all I had. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's a whole schedule. We have a schedule. The first one was in August, October 11th. Is the first one? Yeah. Finance committee meeting. No. Yeah. Capital. The, capital. The, capital. The, the first one, the capital one, is September 29th. Okay. Okay. Um, Miss McFarland. Um, I think this would be considered miscellaneous, but I had calls from residents about the fact that um, they wanted more signs up for no parking on city streets, and I just thought this would be a good time to let everybody know that's watching at home that there is no parking on city streets and there are signs. Um, and I'm not sure that everyone's aware of that, um, but I did have conversations with um, the police department on that. Um, and then also in our last meeting, I think it was the last meeting where this management came in and talked about um, our recycling. Um, I got calls on that because people were concerned that they weren't going to be able to put out smaller bins. And um, it was verified by Chris Campbell that they were just being asked only to put out the big ones when they're full, which saves cost and labor, but that they're not asking for any changes in how we recycle. So if you're using a smaller bin because you're a smaller household or physical or senior, they're not going to change how we're picking up our trash. So I thought that was a good time for everyone to hear that. Um, and then I just wanted to welcome all the new businesses and um, thank them for making choices for their place of business. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Okay, I have um, I have two uh, motions that I need to make. Um, the first one would be uh, that City Council does, my motion would be that City Council does not oppose the corporate name change from Gurniak Enterprises LLC to Calisar Incorporated DBA uh, Best Stop located on Ravenna Road and authorize the clerk to submit the form to the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Any discussion? That's the best stop store down here on Ravenna Road. Uh, so, no questions? Okay. Call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Cerisi? Yes. Okay. The next motion would be that uh, council is not in opposition to the change of stock ownership of the liquor permit for Walgreens Company, DBA Walgreens 04775, located on Darrell Road, and authorize the clerk to submit the form to the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. Is there a second? Okay. Mr. Roden seconds. Any discussion? Is this something we've done before? Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't recall ever. Oh, yeah, we've done it for other establishments. Uh, okay, right? yeah, okay. Oh, okay. I just don't remember right? voting on it. Yeah, the stockholder change is not a common one, but it. we're following the same format it. we do. I know, I know. What's that? I'm sorry. I said the stockholder change isn't a typical one we normally get, okay. but we're just following the same format that we do for the other liquor permits with okay. the motion. Okay, thank you. Okay. Call the roll, please. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Cerisi? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Okay. And the last thing I have is uh, just to mention that our next meeting will be uh, September 13th. At 7 o'clock will be the caucus. 7.30 will be the council meeting right here in the uh, city hall. And that's it, Mr. Roden. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Steele? Um, I have two, two things to talk about. Okay. One is I did receive a call from a resident on Parker Lane with waste management. Apparently, his he was complaining that uh, when they were loading stuff into their truck, a bag of garbage fell off and it was still on the street. Um, I've talked to, to uh, Chris Campbell about it, and the bag has been removed, and Chris is um, trying to ascertain from waste management what exactly happened. Um, and I want to thank him for doing that. It's been a pleasure talking to him about that. Um, second thing is, Amy and the mayor, you, 
It took us a minute or a couple of days, but we did get that a fence up to assuage the uh, fears of some people and the residents in the in my neighborhood because uh, somebody decided to drive down an easement from uh, one place to the, one street to the next, and uh, the residents are really happy. I believe that we have taken care of their problem and we were able to do it in a, inexpensively and quickly. That's it. Okay. Mrs. Stoffer. Um, I just, well, I wanted to wait and well, um, congratulate Kathy Powers on a nice beginning of the school year. I think everything seemed to go so well this year and just saying great job the Twin River Schools for the start and looking forward to an exciting year. And I'd like to congratulate Mr. Serace on his induction to the <laughs> all Thank you. Congratulations. And that's all I have. Okay. Mayor Yates. Thank you. Uh, just one quick comment here. Um, I sent out to, to council um, over the last few weeks, been working on putting together um, numbers for the proposed clubhouse. So uh, what I'd like to have is potentially a work session where we can kind of have some more dialogue. You know, we've kind of cautiously continued to move forward. Um, we've investigated other municipal owned courses um, that have opened their books up to us. We've looked at, you know, I, I think our situation with our golf course now is um, we have to do something with that clubhouse and you know we subsidize it every single year and we've looked at that subsidy um, it's difficult to offset that subsidy without any other revenue streams coming in there you know we we're pretty much where we're at at that golf course I think what this proposed clubhouse is going to allow us to do is create two to three different revenue streams that really have I want to say unlimited but um, has the ability to then help us decrease that subsidy and provide a, a great new asset for not only the course but this community and the residents. Um, so I just want to, you know, if there's any questions that you guys have about some of the numbers that I put together, um, you know, please send me an email. But I'd like to, in the future, I'll might be sending out a request to get a work session going so that we can continue to talk about this to you know, move toward a potential bid. I think that's a good idea, a work session. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it, Mayor? That's it. Okay, Mr. Maestro. Uh, just one thing. In addition to the two uh, individual liquor permits that Mr. Scafidi just read, we also received notice from the Department of Commerce, Division of Liquor Control, whether or not the city wanted to, uh, to challenge or file an appeal to the issuance of any permit in the city. We get this annually. Generally, we just send it off to the police department to see if we have any establishment in the city that's that's gone above and beyond number of complaints or any issues that we might have um, and we didn't receive any uh, negative feedback from the chief that, that we have anything out of out of line I just wanted to bring it to council's attention if we did want to file an appeal on any particular establishment those hearings take place down in Columbus so we don't need any action unless council has specific concern about a specific place but without hearing that uh, we won't file one. And you said that we don't have any. Uh, the, the chief's response was no. That we, okay. I mean, we didn't get anything back from the chief indicating we had a problem with anyone. We asked him, you know, let us know, and and there doesn't appear to be that way. So, just wanted to bring that to council's attention because the correspondence comes to city council. So, Got it. thank you. Okay. Shannon, you have anything? Nothing. Thank you. Okay. Um, then we will move on to. Um, I need a, I'm going to make a motion that we enter into an executive session to discuss matters pursuant to the Ohio Revised Code 121.22 uh, with regards to personnel and litigation. Is there a second? I'll second. Ms. Stoffer, second. Discussion? Call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Ceresi? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Okay, we will go into executive session and then we will come back and reconvene and uh, adjourn the meeting. Thank you.